Hello and welcome to this series of instructional videos on Ecosim Building Designer V8i. This session is all about structure, be it columns, be it beams, be it braces, be it framing, be it slabs, it's all here. So let's get down and start from the beginning. And to start from the beginning, we're going to create a brand new model file. To do that, we come up here to the top to our new file. When we click on our new file, we're brought straight away to this dialog box called New. And before we enter in our name, we may actually want to check our template or our seed file and see which one we're using. In which case, we're going to click on the Browse button down here in the bottom right-hand side. This opens up the Select Seed File dialog box. As you can see here, the one we have highlighted and the one that we'll need is Design Seed under bar Structural.dgn. So we're going to click Open. And with that, we're going to give our design a name, and the name we're going to give it is S for structural underbar steel hyphen low rise. And then we're going to click save and open. Building Designer opens up for us. So as you can see, we have our interface, which is common to every single one of the discipline sets with inside Building Designer. If you want to have a tour of the interface and understand how it all is set out and how it works, then there's a great one in the conceptual modeling session we've done earlier. Let's move in and have a look at some of the integral parts of how our structure is put together in this brand new structural modeling file. Let's come right down to the bottom here to our floor selector and click on this icon called floor selector. Floor selector opens. We're going to select the low rise building. As you can see here in the right hand side here, we've got four floors and a roof. And there's a difference here because we have the finished floor level here starting at ground level. Floor two at 16 foot four inches. But we also have sublevels here, and especially the ones called TOS, top of steel, top of steel of floor one. And these are offset eight inches below the finished floor level. So if you'd like to select the TOS floor one, set active, and then click close. With that, we're going to now just click on building designer pull down here and come down to floor manager. Our floor manager dialog box opens. We're going to twirl down low rise building, and we're all going to also go. And we're also going to twirl down floor one. In here, you can see top of steel floor one, eight inches below the finished floor level. If we select the top of steel floor one, you can automatically see if we come into the parameters and values field next to it. If we scroll down just a little bit, you can see that there is a heading here called discipline. Underneath that, if you click on it, you'll see that the top of steel floor one has been assigned to the structural engineer. And this is whereby you can actually create this sort of, and then we're going to click exit. Now it's time to come and attach some of the modeling files that we'll need to generate our structure itself. To do that, we're going to come across to the left hand side of our task space interface to our project explorer. And in that, we're going to twirl down building models. And in that, we're going to twirl down design models. And in here, we're going to highlight S frame and holding down your control key, also S grid, and just drag and drop those into a view. Our attached source files dialog box opens for us. And we're going to use this drop down here, and we're going to say coincident. And with that, we're going to say OK. If you need to, you can always fit view using this icon here in any of the eight independently driven views inside a building designer called fit view. Now, we don't need all of these views open. We just need a few of them. And that's OK, because we can just close them whenever we want. We can drag and drop, and we can arrange them in any way, shape, or form in such a manner that's more conducive to our working environment. And we don't have to be exact, because if we can get them in, their, in rough positions, we can use Windows Arrange to arrange those views for us. Let me just come back in now. We can also, once we've done that, we can change their orientation. So for instance, in this view one here, the largest of the views, I can click on this icon here called View Rotation, and I can change this from a top view to a right isometric view. Likewise, if I come to my view two, I can click on View Rotation here and just select that to top view. And I can always use my Fit View icon to just fit my view in total to the actual area of the view. I can also use display styles. So here in view one, I can click on this icon for display styles. I can come down to illustration and let's say without lighting and impose that display style onto my model that I've referenced in. So let's set about now we have this with placing 
some columns. We have our grid, we have our slabs, and we have some columns that have been brought in from the architect's basic design. So we're going to come to our task-based interface, second row down, first icon, place steel columns primary. When I click on that, the place steel column primary dialog box opens up. First thing we need to do is click on this jump box here, and we're going to choose main column. As soon as we do that, we get a preview, we get a placement point in red as to where, how this column is going to be placed. You can see it currently it's an I-beam. We're next going to come down to our standard section and click on the magnifying glass next to it. The structural sections dialog box opens for us and we need to change a few of these values. First off, the code is going to be US and under type, we're going to choose I shapes. And with that, we're going to scroll down here until we come to a W10 by 45. Select that, click the OK button, and now you can see we have our standard section, name, and all the properties that go with it are now loaded into our primary, our, into our place steel column primary. Our placement point is going to be center center. Our placement options are going to be placed by length and one, and you can see that there are multiple options here for us. And our length is going to be 16 foot, four inches. Now that I've got my columns set up, all I need to do now is come into my views and start placing. To do that, I'm gonna come into my top view, which is view two. I'm gonna to come to my navigation tools here, this one called window area. Click on that, zoom into the bottom right-hand side, and you can see now, as I right-click to reset, my tool is still active, I can come in here and place on the intersection between these two lines. How am I going to do that? Well, if I just click on AccuDraw here, come across, press the letter I for intersection, AccuDraw does the business for me. You can see here, if I right click, I can actually, I've actually placed one of my columns. You can see it in my elevation and my isometric. I may need to actually place more, and the probability is I'll need to place an awful lot more. I could do that just by click, click, click on all the intersections, or I can just come in here, right click, say copy, come up to my copy element, type in, say, the number five. Then I'm going to click the column, if necessary, zoom in here, place it down, and straight away, you get to see that I have placed five of my columns down of 16 foot, four inches. Very, very simple, very efficient, but the time has come where I need to change the height of my column. Quite simply, I open up my place steel column primary dialog box. I'm going to take this all the way to the top floor the finished floor level. What is that? I'm going to type in 68 inches. I know it's that because literally if I come to my floor selector here and look at my set active floor, click on that jump box, you can see that my roof is at 60 foot 8 inches. In fact, if I twirl that down, it actually has a top of steel as well, which is of course 8 inches below it. So I'm going to choose 60 foot 8 inches full height columns. And also just come back into here, click once and ones here and you can see those full height columns there now I can use the copy or I could use the placement methodology to quickly and efficiently place all my columns across the whole of my structure now that we have all of our columns in place there's just one other section of columns that we need to look at and those are the ones that the architect placed down when they created their fabled atrium let's zoom in on those using our window area tool here we're just going to zoom in onto this atrium section here and you can see there are some rounds here. If you pass your cursor over them, you'll get some information on a tooltip, structural element, level conch, reference. Uh, it's in a reference file. So what we need to do is to bring those into our active file. And therefore, by doing that, we take ownership of them. And therefore, we can include them in any of our design analysis or any other operations that we so choose. So using a selection set, we're going to change this to a block. We're just going to click and select all of those items there. Once we have that, once we have all our columns, what we need to do is highlight them and then right click and copy them into our active file. Click once, twice, and then right click and they're in our active file. You can pass your cursor over them if you so wish and you can see now that there is no reference to a reference. Even better than that, we can go ahead and just select all these columns here and we can right click on them and we can choose modify structural attributes. 
the Modify Structural Attributes dialog box opens up for us. We can check on the radio button called Catalog Selection to activate nine-tenths of this dialog. And in that, let's click on this jump box where it says Type. We're going to choose Column Steel. Under the name of Column Steel, we're going to choose Main Columns. And just to make sure that we are still using our W10 by 45, you can, of course, and should do at some point, want to click on your Properties tab here at the bottom because there is an absolute wealth of information sitting in the background ready for you to utilize and to fill in with added information specific to your project. What we need to do here is come down to the Structural section here, and you can see here the Structural section name, W10 by 45. So what we need to do now is click to Apply to convert all of these and you'll see that we have 12 elements have been changed, 12 columns. Let's close down our Modify Structural Attributes dialog box here. So zooming into those columns, you can still see there's a concrete jacket around them. And what we need to do now is come into our level display in our primary toolbar. We need to highlight our actual S-frame, structure S-frame, turn off s -conc calls there and reset. And now we've turned off those concrete columns in every single one of our active views. So let's come back to our primary toolbar. Let's select references here, open up the reference dialog box. Let's highlight our S frame and then click on the settings pull down here and choose adjust colors. We're going to adjust our transparency either using this slider bar or by just typing in exact numbers. We're going to type in 75%. We're going to make this one absolutely transparent. And with that, we're going to click apply and OK. So now that we've set up the transparency on our slabs, the next thing we need to do is getting ready to put down some beams. And the first thing we can do is to come down to our floor selector, click on the jump box, and if we just twirl up this floor here, we're going to choose top of steel for floor 2. By double-clicking on it, that sets the ACS, in other words, sets our design plane about where the minimum height we're going to be designing at. We're ready to go. So let's come to our task base interface inside our structural design tab, second row down, second icon, place steel beam primary. The dialog box opens for us and we need to click on this jump box here and to select beams. In the standard section area here under the name, we have to come right away across the right hand side of the magnifying glass and click on that. The structural sections dialog box opens up for us and under code, we're going to make sure it says US. Under the type, we set it to eye shapes. And then we're going to select the W8 by 10. Here it is, and click OK. Our placement point is going to be top center. Our placement options are going to be by two points. And automatic coping is going to be on. And we're going to have cope to member connected by AccuSnap. And our clearance is one inch. And the web on it is three quarters. So with that, we can now start placing our beams. Once again, we're going to come into our top view here and using our window area tool, zoom into the bottom right. And with this, we're going to start snapping to our steels and placing them down. You can see just how easy this is just by simply using my panning tools. And there is a full run of the beams. Right click to accept. You can see there in the, in the front elevation and here in my isometric, I have a full range of the Beams now placed at the top of steel of floor two. And we can continue to do that until our whole structure, every single floor, has been framed out, such as this. Well, we've placed columns. We've changed the presentation of our slabs to be able to enable us to place our beams. We've actually placed our beams. What we need to do now is look at placing some framing. So coming back to our task base interface here, let's right click first to reset. Let's come back to our task base interface and second row, fourth icon in is called Place Steel Members Framing Between. Our Place Steel Members Framing dialog box opens up. We're going to come in here and select beams. And under our beams, we're going to make sure that our size, our standard section, is the same as the beam size that we've just placed. We're going to click on the magnifying glass, come to US, I shape. And then we're going to come down here to W8 by 10. There it is. And click OK. Make sure your placement point is top center. Your placement options, number of members, it's going to be three. We're going to make sure that perpendicular to support is checked. And with that, all we need to do now is zoom into this corner here that where we started from, select one of the beams and select the other beam. And straight away, our framing members are placed in there. 
to the extent that you can see that they're coped back and with a factor of safety introduced to them as well. So we can continue doing this throughout the whole of our model as well, when, if unnecessary, any framing members need to be placed down. That is just some of the structural capability of columns, slabs, beams, framing, inside of Ecosyn Building Designer V8i. Thank you very much.